everybody and welcome to this video where we are going to be going over another one of Bukowski's chat books. Which one is that? Oh! oh shit, there it is, dude. Run with the Hunted, not the not the not the original. Not the one from the early 90s. Um, Run with the Hunted, a Bukowski reader. Not that one. That one's no bueno, okay? We're talking about this one. Run with the Hunted, published in 1962 by Midwest Poetry Chap Books. Now, this book has one, it has 21 poems in it, okay? Now, most of all of these poems, I'm trying to think if, uh, we'll get to it, but if you want to read all the poems that are in this chapbook, I think maybe one you're not going to be able to find anywhere. I'll have to go back and look, but eh. these are the books you need. Days Run Away, Like Wild Horses Over the Hills, The Rooming House Madrigals, Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame. Here we go. Let's just start running through it. So the first one we have here is called Wrong Number. And this is written around 1960. This was in, um, obviously, Run with the Hunted. Um, and it catches my heart in its hands in the Rooming House Madrigals. Okay, so this right here, um, even though like a quick search could give you this information, the fact that this is in, it catches my heart in its hands and not in burning in water, drowning in flame, should tell you that not all of it catches its heart in its hands or catches my heart in its hands is in this book. A lot of people think that it catches my heart, um, crucifix in a death hand and terror street, that the entirety of those books are in this book and they're not. It's just selections from that. So that's something to keep in mind. Anyway, as far as magazines go, this poem appeared in Freelance. This is not one of my favorites. I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. This book, this chapbook, is not one of my favorite collections. But as you will see, this style that he's writing, this verbose, vague kind of stuff that he's doing here, it's not what he excels at. I mean, not that he can't do it well, because he obviously can do it while he's doing it. But this isn't what he's known for, okay? But Midwest poetry chapbooks put this book together, okay? And you, you're going to notice that a lot of these poems have ended up in Midwest's The Little Magazine, okay? So apparently there was a... Uh, editor who liked Bukowski stuff like this and I don't know if Bukowski realized that and was like wow like all my shit that's kind of like lofty and vague I could send that to this dude and he'll fucking put it out like I don't know if that was ever a thought but as far as his early stuff goes Bukowski's early stuff it is leaning more towards formal than he will ever get in his career okay just more like poety, like poet voice kind of shit. His um, simplistic, raw shit. You see glimmers of it during this period, but that doesn't kick into high gear until like mid 70s, I would say. Again, this is like 1960. So we're still like 15 years out from him like writing his really hard shit that all of us fucking love. Okay, there are some gems during this period, obviously, or else he would not have been as huge as he was. Okay, but the stuff that he's known for, I think if this is the kind of stuff he was writing, like thousands of other poets who were being published would have just been forgotten with time. But I, I have another video that I want to do kind of along those lines here in a little bit, but we'll get to that later. All right, so a literary romance. Um, this one... It was in um, Run With The Hunted. It catches my heart in its hands. A Bukowski sampler from 1969. And also Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame in 1974. Yeah, this one's great. In fact, this one is great. And I'm going to let him read it to you. All right. A 
literary romance. I met her somehow through correspondence or poetry or magazines and she began sending me very sexy poems about rape and lust. And uh, this being mixed in with a minor intellectualism, it confused me somewhat and I got in my car and drove north through the mountains and valleys and freeways without sleep. Coming off a drunk, just divorced, jobless, aging, tired, wanting mostly to sleep for five or ten years, I finally found a motel in a small sunny town by a dirt road. And I sat there smoking a cigarette thinking, you must really be insane. And then I got out an hour late to meet my date. She was pretty damned old, almost as old as I, not very sexy. And she gave me a very hard, raw apple, which I chewed upon with my remaining teeth. She was dying of some unnamed disease, uh, something like asthma, and she said, I want to tell you a secret, and I said, I know. You are a virgin, 35 years old. And she got out a notebook, 10 or 12 poems, a life work, and I had to read them. And I tried to be kind, but they were very bad. And I took her somewhere, the boxing matches, and she coughed in the smoke and kept looking around and around at all the people and then at the fighters clenching her hands. You never get excited, do you? She asked. But I got pretty excited in the hills that night and Met her three or four more times, helped her with some of her poems, and she rammed her tongue halfway down my throat. But when I left her, she was still a virgin and a very bad poetess. I think that when a woman has kept her legs closed for 35 years, it's too late either for love or for poetry. I should have been doing this with all of them. Because this one is actually, like, a good Bukowski poem. This is the kind of poem that we find more and more as time goes on from him. So this one I, I enjoy a lot. This was in Hearst number 8 in 1961. Uh, Lampeter Muse, Volume 3, Number 3, in 1968. And as far as recordings go, um, it it's on the At Terror Street and Agony Way CD, which is epic. I fucking love that thing. All right, so Sundays Kill More Men Than Bombs, written around 1961. This was in Run With The Hunted. It Catches My Heart In Its Hands in 1963, A Bukowski Sampler in 1969, The Rooming House Madrigals in 1988. It was also in Midwest number three in 1961, and also um, on the At Terror Street and Agony Way CD. And if I keep stopping, that's because the poem is going to be read. Um, it's also on Bukowski Reads His Poetry um, put out by Black Sparrow in 2004. Hooray, Say the Roses. This was also written around 1961. It's in Run with the Hunted, 1962. It Catches My Heart in Its Hands, 1963. Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame in 1974. Um, this was also released in The Outsider, number one, 1961. Um, which... Um, makes sense since uh, Lujan Press is the one who put out It Catches My Heart in 63. Um, Florida Education, Volume 42, Number 9, in May 65. 
And then this is on the recording um, poetry of Charles Bukowski from 2008. This poem is fine. The Sunday Artist. This was in um, Run With The Hunted. It catches My Heart In Its Hands, 63. Penguin Modern Poets from 1968. Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame in 1974. This was also in Target's Magazine, number five from 1961. And he reads this on um, the poetry of Charles Bukowski. Yeah, it's, it's just fine. 3.30 a.m. conversation. Now, I put an asterisk by this one because if you remember, okay, so this was written in around 1961. This poem, 3.30 a.m. conversation, we already talked about in the last video because it was in Signature 2 in 1961 and then Run With The Hunted in 1962. It's also in a Bukowski sampler in 69 and in the Rooming House Magicals from 1988 and was in Target's number seven. There are half, I think, is it half? But a handful of the poems that are in this chapbook were like released in other chapbooks like within the last year before the release of this one. Okay, so we'll hit that up in a little bit here. A Minor Impulse to Complain, written around 1961. This was also in It Catches My Heart in Its Hands in 63 and Rooming House in 88. Um, as far as magazines go, this was printed in Midwest number three from 1961. Wait, let me talk about A Minor Impulse to Complain before I go too far. Because I'm trying, because there were a couple poems that I actually liked in this collection. Okay, this one I'm going to read because there's not an audio version of it. I don't know. I'm going to read this and you'll know what I mean. A minor impulse to complain. Well, it's interesting what goes on and what doesn't go on that should. And the world's quite a sight spun through spiders and webs that catch us half asleep and do us in before we're even old enough to know we're through. If it isn't a whore, it's a wife. If it isn't a wife, it's a jam over taxes, or bread, or liquor, or somebody slipping it into her while you're down at the shop, sweating your nuggets to keep her in silk. Or you're on the horses, or pot, or crossword puzzles, or you're on vitamins, or Beethoven. But you ought to see what goes on on a 75-foot yacht. It would make you give up. Liberty, and Little Magazines, and Tolstoy to see what beautiful young ladies can do to somebody else. And he doesn't even care. And he'll tell you, pouring a short shot, that bitch outscrew a rabbit. And unless you've got money, by the time you've got it figured out, you're either so old you're senseless, or so old you're dead. And there she stands by the rail, looking good. Golden sun and real gold. The fish going by in the largest swimming pool in the world. And she even smiles at you as you go below to get more bottles and boots and to scrape the barnacles from the master. But ah, you pig, he told me all you did, as men will do, which is another way of saying, you and I ain't living well or enough. Now, this poem is one of the better ones in this book. And there are moments of like, fuck, so good. But a lot of it is this thing where he has to throw out that he knows people. He knows Tolstoy. He knows Beethoven. And I'm not saying he shouldn't ever write about that. But so much of his work does this, where it's this and it's that, and it's this and it's that, and it's Tolstoy and it's Beethoven, and da da da, and da da da. And that's fine. This is how, like, he does his shit, okay? But if you come to him, because when you're reading this stuff and you see that, and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. Let's see what else he has to say. You're going to realize that he does that a lot. And if that bothers you, those poems are going to bother you. So I tend to veer away 
from his super repetitive stuff like that. But at the same time, that description of the woman on the ship, like staring into the largest swimming pool in the world. It's fucking brilliant. It's great shit. Love that stuff. I don't know. I guess we all ebb and flow. Like we have our moments where we're fucking good and we're really good. And then moments when we're not so much. But the thing is, this book got published. This guy at Midwest Poetry Chapbooks who put out the the little magazine Midwest, he dug this side of Bukowski. And that poem right there, I think, is probably almost like the farthest out to like what most of us are familiar with with Bukowski that ends up in here. So um, the next one here, we have Down Through the Marching. And this was in um, Run With the Hunted and also The Days Run Away Like Wild Horses Over the Hill. It's, it's not my favorite. It's fine. Um, this was in Epos, Volume 12, Issue 1 from 1960. Um, this one's actually really interesting. This is The Priest and the Matador. This was written um, around 1961. Again, not one of my favorites. A lot of people love this, but I, I it never hit me like this. But um, this one um, was in It Catches My Heart in Its Hands, Penguin Modern Poets, a Bukowski sampler from 69, um, Burning and Water, Drowning in Flame from 74, Essential Bukowski from 2016. Then it was also in, um, as far as magazines go, Epos, Volume 13, Issue 2 in 61, Florida Education, Volume 42, Number 1, from 1963. The Outsider, Number 3, from 1963. Specimen 73, from 1973. And the California Bicentennial Poets Anthology in 1976. This poem was kind of one of those that he would pull out a lot. And this also was made into a broadside in 1962 by a company called Penny Poetry. Now, um, here is the broadside. I'll put that up here so you can take a look at it. Um, I think this is the first poem of his that we've talked about that, um, like, chronologically, that he had a broadside made of. So this is kind of cool, and we will be seeing more of this as we go. Now, Vegas. This poem, again, not one of my favorites, but, okay, so it was in It Catches My Heart in Its Hands in 63, and then Burning Water, Giant and Flame in 74. Um, This was also in Quicksilver, Volume 14, Issue 3 from 1961, and the Norton Anthology of Poetry in 1970. Can you believe it? I'm just as shocked as you. This is another one of those poems where he is the everyman. He's hitchhiking from Vegas um, to L.A. He gets in and he starts talking kind of hoity-toity about poetry and a letter he got and all this other shit. And the truck driver is like, oh, actually, I'm not going all the way to L.A., And so Bukowski keeps running his mouth. What does he say? He says, It's all right, I said. The calla lilies nod to our minds and someday we'll all go home together. And then he's like, In fact, this is as far as we go. You know, I don't know. And then it's just like, so um, 45 minutes later, uh, Ford picked me up and this time I kept my mouth shut. So the thing here is, that's so fucking funny, is that this poem reads to me like he knows he's full of shit. Okay? And I say this in the most loving way possible. I fucking love Bukowski. Okay? I just do. But I'm sitting here saying that a lot of these poems are really vague and really lofty and are just kind of out there. They don't really say a whole lot. It's just all this fucking, like, pap. Okay? In this book, he comes up to an everyday dude starts running his fucking mouth at shit and the dude doesn't want to fucking help him out anymore and so then he fucking gets in a car with somebody else and keeps his fucking mouth shut and i'm not saying bukowski should keep his fucking mouth shut when it comes to being all hoity-toity but at the same time like the problem i'm having with 
this era of his stuff is the exact same situation of him being in the fucking car or the truck with this fucking dude with him fucking saying the shit that he says. You know what I'm saying? It's it's weird. So, like, I've said before when we talk about these chat books that I really feel like it wasn't until maybe the 80s that Bukowski got over this thing where he wanted academia and the formalists and all these, like, people at top-end magazines to accept him. Okay? They didn't have to be his best friend, but to just give him the credit that he was deserved. He wanted that so fucking bad. Okay? And he really didn't get it until... And he get it. He gets it in part, so whatever. But even in this, that poem is him trying to... And I hate, like, psychoanalyzing poetry. But it's like... Him trying to find that acceptance, you know? And, like, he pulls the whole, well, you know, like, I'm a bum, you know? Like, I'm just some lousy bum, but I know my shit, so somebody give me some fucking credit. You know? It's that whole fucking thing. And um, I'm glad he eventually grows out of this, even though there will be parts of that that always linger but I just, I feel like it's so desperate, like, earlier in his career. Which is shocking, because he was fucking killing it on the poetry scene. Like, but between, like, what's that site? There's a site, um, is it Verdant Press? Has all of, not even all of them, just the ones that he knows about. Um places that published Bukowski and it's like before 19 before 1970 the places that had published Bukowski and it was like over 300 I'll get the actual number and like we could do another video on that another time but it's just like this motherfucker was killing it and he was constantly craving that acceptance you know so ants crawl on my drunken arms now this one here this is in Days Run Away Like Wild Horses Over the Hills. Um, we did some stuff on this poem in the uh, Bukowski Book Club. Um, this is also in On Drinking. It's the first poem in On Drinking from 2019. Um, as far as magazines go, this was in the Literary Art Press Volume 2, Number 2 from 1961. I could not find an image of what this one looked like. Anthony. Um, this one is in Rooming House Madrigals as well. And this was also in that literary art press. Oh, but this was in number one of volume two. Um, and I couldn't find that one either. Um, poem's okay. It's whatever. Um, Monday Beach, Cold Day. Um, this is also in Rooming House um, and was in Midwest number three. Um, pull Me Through the Temples, Pull Me Through the Wine. This one um, is not in any of the other books that we talk about, but this was in A Signature of Charles Bukowski. So if you go back to that um, video I did, um, I read that poem to you, I believe. I found it and um, read that one to you there. Conversation on a Telephone was also in A Signature of Charles Bukowski. Um, and is in The Days Run Away Like Wild Horses Over the Hills. And this is also in On Cats from 2015. And he reads this in the um, Bukowski tapes. And also on the poetry of Charles Bukowski. Okay, so um, Old Man Dead in a Room. This one I like a lot more than the others. And this one has been in a ton of shit too. So this is in um, It Catches My Heart in Its Hands from 63, Penguin Modern Poets from 68, Bukowski Sampler from 69, Rooming House Madrigals from 88, and um, Essential Bukowski from 2016. This poem, this is really weird. This poem was also in Outsider number one and Outsider number three. That trips me out that they would put the same poem in the same magazine. 
Um, and that was from 61 and 63. Florida education from 65. Specimen 73 from 73. Thinking of the Lost World from 1980. Could not find a copy of that. South Bay, Volume 4, Number 8 from 81. Could not find that. And On the Bus, Number 6 from 1990. And he reads this on Poetry of Charles Bukowski. This one, I'm... I am visited by an editor and a poet. This is so Bukowski. This is like your stereotypical Bukowski poem. There's not, I'll read it because there's not an audio of it. It's, it's a good one. It's kind of wordy. And one thing you will notice, if you pick up Rooming House Magicals, because there's a lot of early stuff in here. This is 46 to 66. If you look at the how these p- poems are laid out and then pick up like War All the Time or um, The Last Night on Earth poems and just see how drastically sparse his later poems are compared to his early stuff, it'll blow your mind. Okay, so I am visited by an editor and a poet. I had just won 115 from the Head Shakers and was naked upon my bed listening to an opera by one of the Italians and had just gotten rid of a very loose lady when there was a knock upon the wood. And since the cops had just raided a month ago or so, I screamed out rather on edge, who the hell is it? What do you want, man? I'm your publisher. Somebody screamed back and I hollered, I don't have a publisher. Try the place next door. And he screamed back, you're Charles Bukowski, aren't you? And I got up and peeked through the iron grill to make sure it wasn't a cop. And I placed a robe upon my nakedness, kicked a beer can out of the way, and bade them enter. An editor and a poet. Only one would drink a beer, the editor. So I drank two for the poet and one for myself. And they sat there sweating and watching me, and I sat there trying to explain that I wasn't really a poet in, an, in the ordinary sense. I told them about the stockyards and the slaughterhouse and the racetracks and the conditions of some of our jails, and the editor suddenly pulled five magazines out of a portfolio and tossed them in between the beer cans. And we talked about Flowers of Evil, Rambo, Vuillan, and what some of the modern poets looked like. J.B. May and Wolf the Headley are very immaculate, clean fingernails, etc. I apologize for the beer cans, my beard, and everything on the floor, and pretty soon everyone was yawning, and the editor suddenly stood up, and I said, are you leaving? And then the editor and the poet were walking out the door. And then I thought, well, hell, they might not have liked what they saw, but I'm not selling beer cans and Italian opera and torn stockings under the bed and dirty fingernails. I'm selling rhyme and life and line. And I walked over and cracked a new can of beer, and I looked at the five magazines with my name on the cover and wondered what it meant, wondered if we are writing poetry or all huddling in one big tent, clasping assholes. Now again, this whole thing. Where? He wants you to think. This is, this is the paradox of Bukowski. He wants you to think that he's the everyman. Uh, he wants you to know about the stockyards, the slaughterhouses. Here's the thing about the slaughterhouse. Bukowski works at the slaughterhouse for like two hours. That's it. And he's talked about that fucking slaughterhouse his whole fucking life. The stockyards. I'm pretty sure Bukowski never worked at the stockyards. In fact, this picture at the back of the Days Run Away, this picture right here of him trying to get up in the thing, the train car, um, Neely Tchaikovsky's dad shot that picture. And look how high up he is. He's barely off the fucking ground. Neely said that Bukowski used to talk a lot of shit about how he used to run the train cars and all this shit. And so they decided that they would do a photo shoot out in the train yard. Okay? It took them forever to get him up there to just hold on to that ladder. 
And Neely's dad, Sam, who had run the trains and all this stuff, said, that boy's never ride a train. <laughs> There's a lot of myth behind Bukowski, and that's fine. The, the legend's great. Everyone loves the legend. It's, it's what it is. But he wants you to think of him like this. Think of the beer cans. Think of him gambling. Think of him with um, prostitutes and all this other shit and barely getting by and walking around naked in a sea of beer cans. But then at the same time, in the same breath, he wants you to know that he knows about Flowers of Evil. He knows about Rambo. He knows about Vlon. He knows about all this shit, okay? He wants you to know that he is a educated man as much as an education as he has. He might not have gone to the same school as you, but he knows everything you know just as well as you do, if not better. So if you come into his filth, you can carry on a conversation and you'll go, this man's no different than I. Okay, but that never fucking happened. And his whole life, he strived for that. And then it gets to the point where he just hates people, doesn't want people around because they just don't get him. And people just fucking talk and he doesn't want to fucking hear them talk. And he doesn't even know why these motherfuckers left. He's so fucking annoyed. And I, I know I sound like I'm giving Bukowski a lot of shit right now. And I'm really not because I fucking love him. I really fucking do. This book, this chapbook, is just so far, like, to me, like, the weakest of the chapbooks that he has put out. And, um, like, his... Sh As we go, you will see. But anyway. So what's next? Because I hope I could get... Yes. This is what I want to talk about. The next one is a real good... A, a real thing, a good woman. We're going to come back to this. Um, I just want to talk about Horse on Fire and Hermit in the City real quick, the ones that round out this book. Because both Horse on Fire and Hermit in the City were both in a signature of Charles Bukowski um, that was published in 1960 by Targets, um, just two years before this book came out. Um, Horse on Fire is also in the Rooming House Madrigals, and that also appeared in Invisible City, number eight, um, April 73. This picture right here, I think, is number seven. So this isn't the exact one, but this is what Invisible City looks like. Hermit in the City, um, another poem written around 1960, uh, again, was in um, Signature of Charles Bukowski from Targets 4. And um, also in The Days Run Away, like Wild Horses Over the Hills from 1969. Okay, so what I want to talk about. Oh, actually, real quick, I didn't get to tell you that um, I Am Visited by an Editor and a Poet was also in Hearse Number 7 from 1961. And I think this is pronounced art. It's just I'm trying to be clever. Volume 2, Number 1, the July-August edition from 1989. Okay, so a real thing, a good woman. This is very exciting because in the Bukowski book club, um, on the member stream we had last week, a big topic came up about the John Martin edited works post Bukowski's death as opposed to before Bukowski's death. And I was trying to like throw some stuff together and I knew it was going to come up eventually. I just didn't know it was going to come up so soon this week. So here we are. Um, this poem was in um, It Catches My Heart in Its Hands from 63, but it is also in, are you ready for this? Y'all ready for this? It's in Come On In, which was put out um, by uh, Black Sparrow slash Echo. It might have just been Echo at this point. In 2006, edited by John Martin. And then it's also in On Love, out in 2016, edited by Abel DeBrito. Abel DeBrito has kind of made it his goal to make sure that every poem that John Martin bastardized becomes right again. Okay? So what you're going to see on the screen 
is the two versions of this poem. The original version of this poem is in On Love, okay? And it says what? 27 lines, okay? The edited version of this poem is in Come On In, edited by John Martin. The edited version of this poem is 45 lines, okay? So, a couple things here. One, if you look on this, you will see the highlighted marks. The highlighted marks in the Come On In bits are the parts that John Martin added. But if you look at On Love, the parts that are highlighted are the things that John Martin left out or just changed, okay? So those are the two things. He took out giant chunks of text out of this poem and somehow made it really long. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you. This is my thought on John Martin. Now, I don't know this for sure because I haven't looked at every single one of the poems that he muckied up with. But I honestly think he made the poems longer line-wise to make bigger, fatter books to be able to charge more for the books. That's one of the things I think because some of the shit in here is so fucking stupid. The changes, like the line break changes. It's like um, splinters, you need that on one line? Really? That That's what you're going to do? I kissed her and rubbed her head. John Martin is a Scientologist. So a lot of, I'm actually surprised that it says whore in here to be completely fucking honest here. But some of the things that are just really weird. So the first line is a completely brand new line that like I put the book down and ask. That's not in the original poem. Why are they always writing about the bulls, the bullfighters? Question mark. Those who have never seen them? Question mark. That's not how the poem write, is read. The poem is read like this. They're always writing about the bulls, the bullfighters, those who have never seen them. Then, and as I break the web... Of the spider reaching for my wine. I actually like that better because on Bukowski's it's. And as I break the webs of the spiders reaching for my wine. How many fucking spiders are reaching for his wine right now? Jesus Christ. Then he goes, John Martin says, The hum of bombers breaking the solace. Bukowski says, The uh hum of bombers, goddamn hum breaking the solace. Then John Martin adds, I decide. I must write an impatient letter to my priest about some Third Street whore. While Bukowski says, I must write a letter to my priest about some Third Street whore who keeps calling me up at three in the morning. John Martin says, who keeps calling me up at three in the morning. So that's fine. Then Bukowski says, up the old stairs, ass full of splinters. John Martin, for some reason, doesn't like up the old stairs. So he just puts ass full of splinters. Then Bukowski says, thinking of pocketbook poets and the priest. And I'm over the typewriter like a washing machine. The look, look, bulls are still dying. And they are raising them, raising them like wheat in the fields. And the sun's black as ink black ink that is i read all of that so you could hear what john martin did i go over to the typewriter next to the window to see my letter and look look the sky's black as ink the changes that are made are so fucking stupid it's not like this makes this read better it's just like i'm gonna so another thing are these fucking adverbs that John Martin wants to, like, stick his dick into all the time. So, like, he, he wants to crawl quickly into bed instead of just getting into bed. Th that's about it. And then it's just, like, tense stuff. Like, 
But it just goes to show you, this is what, like, a lot of people get pissed off about. The editorial changes that John Martin makes do not make sense other than to stroke John Martin's ego. They just don't. Anyway, this poem was also an outsider number one from 1961. And you could hear Bukowski read it on At Terror Street and Agony Way from 1998. Thank fuck. Yeah, so this is the book. And again, like, the poems from the other books are good. A Real Thing, A Good Woman, I like. I'm Visited by an Editor and a Poet, I like. Old Man Dead in a Room, I like. Conversation on Telephone, I like it. Um, pull me through the temples and pull me through the wine. That's not that great. Um, Monday beach, cold day. E. Eh. Anthony. Eh. Um, ants crawl on my drunken arms is great. I love that. Vegas. It's interesting. Okay. Um, the priest and the matador. Like some people love it. Down through the marching. It's okay. Um, a minor impulse to complain has its moments. 3.30 a.m. conversation I like. The Sunday Artist, not so much. Hooray, Say the Roses, not so much. Sundays Kill More Men Than Bombs, that title is better than the poem. Um, a Literary Romance is good, I do like that. And Wrong Numbers, like, wh- whatever. So this is, um, as far as his chapbooks go, this one is probably one of the bigger ones, like with the more poems in it. And as we go, we're going to start seeing more and more. But I just think this um, is just like, I don't know. But again, it's based on the editor. Like when I start putting out other people's shit, which is already in the works here, like there are going to be times when I put somebody's stuff out and some people are going to read that and go, why the fuck did they put that poem out? Well, I put that poem out because I thought that poem was fucking awesome. So that's how that works. As far as the John Martin editing thing, I have changed people's line breaks on some poems in order to make them fit into the blood rag. So I know that that happens, but it doesn't happen to the extent that I'm elongating your poem. Like it's usually I have to like just fix one or two lines to make something fit on there. You know what I'm saying? So again, I'm not trying to be hard on Bukowski. My hope is... The hope in my head is that he knew he had some poems like this. Everyone has poems like this, okay? And he knew that this dude likes those poems. Like I've said this before in workshops. If you know that there's an editor out there and every time you send him a poem that has ice cream in it, the motherfucker takes it, then no, shit, I'd like to sell some poems this month. Guess I better write some fucking ice cream poems to pay the fucking bills and send it to the fucking ice cream man. And he'll fucking go, oh, this is a great poem about, you know, freedom and, like, um, like dark desires and all this other shit. And you're like, that's about a motherfucker eating an ice cream cone. But sure, dude, can I please have my $5 now? That kind of shit. You know, that's what I'm hoping Bukowski was doing here. I don't know. I mean, he fucking threw in a bunch of ones that had just been published as well. And this motherfucker had more poems than fucking God. And he's fucking recycling poems from the year before. Are you fucking with me right now? So this whole thing just seems weird. Like there's so many questions that I have for this. But anyway, so that's the shit. I hope you liked this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And before the Bukowski fanboys come after me right now, I am one of you. I love Bukowski. I really do. I just think his later work is so much better than this stuff. No shade at all. Okay. So with that said, May's chapbook. Um, It's a split chapbook with me and Bunny Wild. Let us bleed. Ten poems from Bunny. Ten poems from me. This is out at the link down below at my Etsy shop. Um, Check it out there. And because it's May and I fucked up, my uh, select chapbooks are still only $5 for the rest of this month. So go over there and take a look and fill yo cart. Because soon, it's going to just cost you more money. So whatever. So keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. 
and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.